Welcome to this edition of Hindsight is Horrifying, the show where three mostly normal and somewhat cynical adults discuss life as members of the TV generation. Now here are your hosts, Darth Jader, Jason Mitchell, and Adam B. We're dancing. We're back, everybody, again. <laughs> After yeah. uh, about been gone a year and a half. For only a second. <laughs> yeah, well. Seems like a second. Well, we've, we've been gone, we've been traveling the world. Right? Yeah. Between the three of us, we've been out of commission traveling for about mm -hmm. the better part of two months now. Yeah, two so, months. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, we've, uh, it is good to be back. Um, it is, yeah. yeah. well, you know, yeah. <laughs> actually. Same yeah. people, different yeah. time. Yeah. But we have been doing this for a long time. We're just reflecting the body of work we have oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, we have a lot of episodes of this show. Yeah. Yes, we, we do. have a ton of episodes of this show. And we can go back in time and see, oh, look how young we were. That's the scary thing. I'm still young, thank you very much. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll catch up with you. Oh, I'm, I have no doubt. <laughs> it's it's well, inevitable. But this week, we have, uh, for your viewing delight, uh, not that you can really see it. A Mr. Uh, Brown pick. We have a Mr. Brown pick. And why don't you tell us what you picked? And I'm guessing it wasn't Hamlet. No, no, no. <laughs> but this why? A, this was a, well, this was a throwback to the 70s where everything was focused on like the Bermuda Triangle, mysticism, the devil. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome. They, they made movies, just they churned them out. Oh my God, cranked in the Bermuda Triangle. But this was called Race with the Devil with Peter Fonda Ooh. and Warren Oates. And for those of you who don't know Warren Oates, he played Sergeant Hulka. And for those of you who don't know who Sergeant was Hulk is, say. fuck you. That's yeah. what I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right out of the yeah. game. Go to hell, Brown. embryo. <laughs> yeah. So Darby. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> he won't know who that is. Dar he, might he didn't have... even know who Mr. Roper was. Uh, oh, no. He might have seen Stripes. No. Maybe. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, they still make jokes about Stripes on Family Guy. So maybe, you know. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's a old. possibility. It's very old. I mean, this this movie is from this glorious period when somebody's. It, it, I mean, you had uh, movies like uh, Bride of Satan, um, Satan's, Satan's Cheerleaders. cheerleaders. Yes, yes, Satan's Cheerleaders. Uh, touch of Touch of Satan. Uh, you could just put Satan in a movie. And it was going to sell you a certain amount of tickets. As before, you know. heroin took over as the ultimate evil of America. Yeah. It was Satan and then yeah. it was heroin. So, And it was always, uh, and I love this, I love this genre of the uh, small town yes. <laughs> Satanists <laughs> who, you know, and, and spoiler alert, there's small town Satanists in this movie. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much sum, sums but, it up. But they always follow the same sort of pattern where there's like this group of people in a small town that are secret Satanists. And it's like, they do these rituals to give themselves, you know, the greater good. Yeah. Or whatever. Right. <laughs> whatever the motive is. Yeah. But they all are still living in little backwoods, hick towns. So yeah, you've got your Gomer piles. You've got what are the sacrifices really buying? Yeah, what them? is the return on the investment? <laughs> no is pots of gold. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, well, I mean, our, group of heroes in the RV ran away before we could find out what the benefit of the satanic ritual was. So who knows? Well, there true. might be one. Well, and it's like everyone... They peeled well, out. Well, okay, so before we get too deep into discussing the movie... Synopsis. Um, you know, synopsis, and the, the thing is, honestly, who's the star of the movie? Satan? No. No, come on. Who's Peter the, Fonda. Peter Fonda, man. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, how fucking cool is Peter Fonda? He was amazing. How fucking cool is this guy? You know, he's like Mick Jagger and Paul Newman had a baby. Okay, <laughs> like, uh, it's just uh, like the way he's built and his right, feathery hair. I'll go hair with you on everything. that. I'm gonna go with you and on that. And he's obviously good at his own stunts. Like and he, he did can obviously star draw with it. Dennis Hopper in a pretty cool film too, didn't he? Oh yeah. I mean, well, he was. Wait, was he in Vanishing Point? I don't know. Uh, Do you know what movie I'm talking about? A classic with Jack Nicholson. Peter well, Fonda. She knows, she over knows. The no, <laughs> she knows. She'll get it. Just give her time. All right. I got to look at Vanishing Point and see if he was in that. I'm honestly not sure. Put me under too much pressure, Mr. Brown. Well, it's what you are not. <laughs> it's called Easy Rider, actually. <laughs> but, uh... Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, and I have very young Jack Nicholson in it. But, yeah, Peter Fonda is super cool. You know, he was definitely a rebellious version of his no, papa. He was not in Vanishing Point. Okay. Oh. It was Henry Fonda and his sister, I think, is Jane, Jane Fonda. Fonda. Are there any other Fondas lurking Bridget, out there? Bridget, Bridget, Fonda Bridget Fonda is his is daughter. His daughter. 
not because yeah. uh, Bridget's still around. Yeah, because Jane is still around. She, with yeah. she's, she's in her eighties now. When she sits around, yeah. Have she you seen her? Have you house. seen Bridget Fonda lately? Yeah. Oh, um, I was talking about Jane Fonda. Yeah, let's, let's hear. You, you, well, Jane you guys, Fonda you guys looks discuss. a lot better than Bridget. That's for sure. I don't know what Bridget looks like. Couldn't tell you. But while you're doing that, Jason, I'm going to share the synopsis with the hindsighters who have likely never heard of this movie, just as I had not before Mr. Brown suggested it. So, Roger, Peter Fonda, and his friend Frank Warren Oates and their wives, Laura Parker and Loretta Swit, are heading from San Antonio to the wilderness of rural Texas for some off-road motocross. What they find instead is a satanic cult sacrifice, and they are unfortunate enough to be caught observing the ritual. Naturally, <laughs> this doesn't sit too well with the cult members. Uh, <laughs> now, Roger and Frank are on the run from what is apparently a very sizable Texan Satanist community. It's, yeah, because <laughs> that's a large community. And they're in their 1975 Vaughn. No, it was a Vaughn 32 foot uh, Grand uh, Cabana. Casa? Grand Casa or something? I looked it up. I don't recall, but it is yeah. one sharp recreational oh, yeah. vehicle. But it With only but, one bed and yeah. four people. But it, it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have real wood, though. It's got plastic. Paneling. It's easier to maintain. I, it's true. Yeah. That's true, because the wife does have to get in there and clean it, you know, twice a week. <laughs> Back when they still did that <laughs> stuff, still right? did that, in the yeah. 70s. Wait, what? <laughs> if only it had come with its own ham radio, they could have called oh, for help. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been cool? Well, okay, let's, let's talk about <laughs> the glaring plot hole of the entire movie is that two dudes who sell motorcycles and who live in Texas load up in an RV completely unarmed. I Not know. a gun among them. Uh-uh. They have guns later in the movie. They, they buy them. They, oh, they buy them. them. That's right. You're right. They buy the guns. Oh, wow. That I think that is just because I mean, if they had had a gun, that would be such a short movie. It would, of course. <laughs> now yes. they had plenty of liquor, just no weapons. Tons of liquor. Yeah. Well, Tons. it was the seventies, so yeah, they should have made some Molotov cocktails off those vodka <laughs> bottles. That would have been probably that's, pretty that's cool. a waste of good liquor. That's what yeah. that is. Well, they kept it was weird too when the guy said, "Let's warm up the martinis," and I went, that "Man doesn't know how a martini works." <laughs> no, he does not. <laughs> it's a Texas martini. Here's your hot martini. <laughs> it's just a glass of hot vodka. <laughs> I boiled it like Dr. Yeah. Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you're right. They are not armed. I completely forgot about that point in the movie, Jason. Uh, totally unarmed. They have a, a book with like a guide of all of the uh, RV, or, uh, yeah, RV stops. Mm -hmm. You know, so right, they, they right. can look up. And, and But, of course, no, we're not going to go to one of those. We're going to go, this road looks good. Yeah, they literally <laughs> just go off on this dirt path. And I guess they you know, are just kind of adventurous guys. They like motocross and they're tough. So, you know, what's, what's well, the harm? Well, he spent $35,000, yeah. which is actually in 75, a lot, a lot of a money. A million point five, I yeah. think yeah. it's 1. the $17 billion. Dollars. Million dollars. <laughs> 100 <laughs> billion dollars. <laughs> which I'm sure opened a few eyes and still opens eyes. That's a lot of money. I wouldn't, I couldn't spend 35,000 on an RV, but nevertheless. Especially those not damn, Do you realize how much those things cost nowadays? They're like they're like three hundred grand. Yeah, it's pretty. What? Oh yeah, yes, you, see, you've got to you've got to like sell your house and get a mortgage or oh get a loan. Goodness. Like the, the, a lot of the people who do that, they have to sell their house, and I don't think they would ever drive them across a river. No, no. no. <laughs> and plus, I doubt that they would take their wives on extended road trips. But you know, maybe that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> L Loretta Swit. Let, let's talk about Loretta uh, because she is, of course, uh, Alice. Well, yes, yeah, in this, she's Alice, but she's known the world over hot lips. as Hot Lips Houlihan. Um, although she wasn't. Which, by the way, <laughs> children, was a TV show called <laughs> MASH, Mash, which ran from like 72 <laughs> to 81. So this was right in the middle of that run. I guess she probably, during the you know mid-season break, went and, and shot this film. The suicide is painless. Well, yeah, and it is actually kind of weird that they got her for this. Because she was, I mean, pretty... You know, like you said, it's, it's in the middle. Like yeah. This. Yeah. It would sort of be like Jennifer Aniston going off and doing a cheap horror movie. Well, she did there, is, there was films. a slight difference between television in the 70s and television today. In what sense? Well, it's actually respectable to do television now. It was really frowned upon back in the day. Well, television was sort of considered like the slush job. Like, and, but nowadays you have, uh, and I remember Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I think, was saying this in an interview, 
what he was basically arguing that, oh, but I get to stay in one place with my family for an elongated period of time. That's yeah. actually nice. So, yeah. uh, is it, ghost? is it Armageddon outside? What's happening? We, we, there's a ghost here, everyone. So just ignore him. Thumping. Yeah. If you don't believe in him, he can't hurt you. But there was a time when Ernest Borgnine, he won the Academy Award for, what was it, Mar not Marnie, so maybe it was Marnie, it was something from the late 50s, early 60s, and he would he refused to lower himself to do television. Huh. Lower himself to and do television. And he ended up on Airwolf. And well, McHale, <laughs> McHale's, oh, McHale's Navy, Navy was the big yeah. one. Yeah. Because this one, this, he tells the story, this is uh, Ernest Borgnine, about some kid came to the door to deliver pizza, right? And, and uh, he says, yeah, do you know who I am? He's like, I have no who, idea who you are. He goes, well, do you know who Phil Silvers? Oh my God, I love Phil Silvers. You know, and he yep. started rattling off like, do you know Andy Griffith? I love Andy Griffith. He's like, damn, I, I guess I better do television because no one knows who the hell I am. Then he did Mikhail's Navy and, and, you know, peaked at Airwolf. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was, there was wonderful. There was definitely a paradigm shift. You're completely right about that, Adam, because being a movie star used to be just the ultimate career path in Hollywood. Television just wasn't that. Now it's in yeah. commercials. They would, they, they would oh, yeah. go to Japan to do commercials because yeah. yep. it was just below them, but oh, yeah. they made a lot of money. They made a fortune. I think I mean, Moira Rose even said something about that because her daughter was giving her a hard time about not wanting to sign autographs at a convention. She goes, yeah. mom, you did a commercial. And she goes in Japan. I mean, <laughs> cause she was so ashamed of having done it. Well, and, and the Japanese market was so they would literally, uh, what was it like Johnny Depp did that commercial in Japan where he's, he's like playing guitar and it's, it's. How do I not know about this? Oh yeah. Johnny, Johnny Depp did a, yeah. He's. I don't doubt it. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's actually done commercials they, they, all Everyone the has. I mean, it, you know, like there, there are movies, there was a, like a Japanese cell phone commercial with uh, Tommy Lee Jones in it. That doesn't surprise know? me. And like, it's just, I don't know if they, well, if they thought Tommy Lee Jones was going to get them more, you know, subscribers, but they paid him. He's recognizable, you know? and plus, like it's like several years ago, I actually saw the Black Eyed Peas uh, and Ludacris in concert together, and guess what? Ludacris was opening for the Black Eyed Peas, which doesn't make any sense until you realize, oh, Ludacris got paid $20,000 for an hour of work instead of three hours of work. So wow, that I is think almost a lot ludicrous. of stars... Uh, but uh, but no, one final thing. I think maybe Loretta <laughs> thought this was her way of breaking onto the big screen, because she maybe. was good on the small screen. yeah. And that's a good point. So, Mr. Yeah. Brown, which of the hot lips? Excuse me. What the hell? I have no idea. What I just heard in God's it. name was that sound? <laughs> Are you a dolphin now? No, I believe it's the devil. I, th is here. I, I think he's coming I, out of the haunted. screen from a 1975 film. Yeah. What was it your might, question? It what, might be. What but, was your question? but in my mind, it's John Lovitz from that SNL skit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, of the two hot lips, hula hands, which one is was hotter? My vote. Oh, my Sally vote. Is Kellerman. Sally Kellerman by a million, yeah, by miles. A million miles. Even even Sally Kellerman when she was in Back to School. Yeah, was one hot yeah. number. Oh, I loved her. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny because like uh, the 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 other actress who plays uh, was it Anne, I think. Alice. Oh, she was. She. I thought she was very. She was, but you know. she really didn't do much. No. Oh, you're talking about never mind. Yeah, <laughs> she really. Yeah, she really didn't do very much. Um, and of course, everybody else in the movie had pretty extensive careers, obviously. Well, Peter Fonda kind of retired. He hasn't done any. I haven't seen Peter Fonda in anything in fairly. Well, he, he died in he 2019. He died a while ago. So that yeah, would no, 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 anything no. since then. I yeah. was looking up his IMDb the other day and he worked uh, actually, he was in an Alec Baldwin My brother movie. got into a Twitter feud with him. Really? With Peter yeah, Fonda? With, with, Peter, with Peter Fonda. Oh, I don't, do I don't, tell. Oh. Do tell. I don't remember what the subject was, but Peter Fonda said something. My brother tweeted something like, disagreeing with him and it turned into this whole thing with my brother and Peter Fonda <laughs> going back and forth on Twitter for like two days and <laughs> I hope he saved it oh yeah he's got it oh that's got great it. yeah yeah um and of course um Sergeant Holka he went on to be oh. Sergeant Holka and other things well he was he was a very yeah. famous actor throughout the 50s 60s and into the 70s this is Warren Oates we're talking yeah. about and then well this is the funny thing I only knew him as Sergeant Holka Right. I don't even remember oh, yeah. being in this yeah. movie. And then I started looking and he was, and then of course he, after, after stripes, he died three, three years later yeah. of a heart attack. And he had done, I think two or three other movies with Peter Fonda ah. for this. So this is like the last of their collaborations. And I saw the names of them and I'd never heard of them before, but I thought, you know, 
those those look like those kind of trippy seventies, you know, you, you know, kind of psychedelic biker movies. Yeah, you know, um, in which wasn't it Peter Fonda who famously smoked weed in <laughs> Easy Rider? Or was oh that, yeah, 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 like actual. They, weed, oh yeah, not, they were they were fake. Yeah, weed. They, no, that yeah, that was that was legit. They were they were blitzed in that movie. But no, he actually worked up. And until then they got the blitzed year, at the end of the movie. So. He worked up till the year that he died. He was in oh, something yeah. called The Last Full Measure. Uh, he was even in a cartoon. Uh, from 2017 to 2018. Stripes, the animated series. <laughs> Milo Murphy's Law. Oh, that's, uh, uh, my, wait, he was in that? He was, he that was, that's, uh, by the same people that did Phineas and Ferb. Apparently uh, it was only two episodes, but, um, yeah, he's, been, he was working up until the, Weird Al was died. in that. I don't doubt it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it, it didn't get received nearly as well as Phineas and Ferb. By far the, the superior. I've never series. watched either show. I wouldn't know. Phineas and Ferb's a really good show. If you ever, it, it, one of these days, you know, if Josh, tell Josh to get kind of high and watch Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the thinking man SpongeBob. Well, right now he's on the newest <laughs> rendition of Beavis and Butthead because that, okay. that's a thing <laughs> yeah, that happens. Okay. So. Yeah, right. It's out again. Yes. They've uh, released some new episodes where Beavis and Butthead are middle aged now. <laughs> so. Apparently, age, it's great. Age happens to us all. Uh, yes, it, it does. for us all. So the sort of the uh, inciting incident of the movie, and there's a lot of setup. It's weird because it's not a long movie, but it's got a lot of padding. It does. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, that was the 70s. They spent a lot of time investing, and it was always like, okay, what's their backstory? Yeah. What do they do for a living? And, and it's, they open the film with the menacing music, and then they have the happy, yeah, upbeat, I know. sweet music that kind of is syrupy sweet and annoys the heck out of you. <laughs> the convoy song yeah. as they're driving through. He's <laughs> pounding down. But well, yeah, so- yeah, no, but they do. They invest, you know, like the characters... You even you start. Know, you know them like you've got their fingerprints real quick. Yeah, you know, you know their whole relationship. These are you know what they do. You can almost imagine their entire story of them putting together their business. Yeah, you know, and just a little bit of, of screenwriting. It's, it's it's a talent. It's something that we don't get very much anymore. Well, and you start on just an ordinary Joe day for each of them in their uh, bike shop, and they're getting ready to go on this long road trip so that they can ride bikes elsewhere. And it's it's pretty simple, honestly, but obviously you got the two best friends and the wives who the their best friends, and they're all going to go in an RV together and have a long trip. But Which sounds miserable. It sounds horrible. <laughs> it sounds like the worst possible th- vacation ever. Because like these days I can sort of understand how RVs are more expensive uh, because I think they've got a lot more features. In this RV, there's one bed, there's one bathroom, well, there's the, one couch. No, I mean, they're but really... They have a microwave. Yeah. Yeah, they can brown their, their bird in the microwave. I don't know how that works, no. but uh, it's like, it's the old tradition of, of microwave manufacturers where they just lie. Yeah. You know, they have buttons on microwaves that are just lies. But Popcorn I, button. I, I just... Oh, that's one of the lie. biggest lies in lie. all of history. That's like... <laughs> Oh, man. But see, you guys grew up with microwaves. I remember, you know, I, was, I, I, I remember when we got our first one. Yeah, well, I do, too. Yeah, I bought yeah. it for my family. I bought it myself. It was the first thing I bought for my family when I was in the Navy, right? But I would babysit for this family, and they got a ra- They had a radar range. And, I, and they said, just put the hot dog in and run it for a minute. And I'm like... Oh, no. <laughs> that is way too long. <laughs> or however long. I know I, whatever this it was. <laughs> But I couldn't believe that it. That needs to be thing, a slogan. <laughs> you could, you could, you put, the, you put, the, you put the, the hot dog in the box, and it got hot. Hot, hot fast. Put the hot dog in the box and run it for a minute. And, and, <laughs> and then it just explo- it explodes. It explodes. It explodes. Of course usually, it does. Usually at the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> Get stuff everywhere. Oh, you know? it was such a mess. I had to spend like half hour cleaning, and then you're cleaning the inside yeah, of the, the it, box. Yeah. Jesus. I and you don't feel like that because now you're tired and hungry. <laughs> I no, just, my, you know, my brother used to cook hot dogs in the. Uh, in the but I used vinegar and, water to clean the inside oh, that's of the good. box because that worked best, and it was natural. Well, that's true. Go ahead. And it left it with I a very forgot fresh. What I was going to say. <laughs> it, it, it smelled very fresh afterwards. Like, a, like, <laughs> like almost like a, like a summer, summer's eve. Sometimes you just don't have that <laughs> so fresh feeling. Oh goodness, goodness! Uh, I hate both of you with all of my heart and soul. Anyway, um, but it's also got a color TV. With it, great reception. Yeah, yeah. There's an antenna. Yeah, there's an antenna. <laughs> I'm like, no cable plug ins or anything. Yeah. But going on a vacation like this, because you're basically trapped in a very small room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, there's one person who's, you know, miserable because they're driving. And they took turns, though. I even made a note of that. Well, like, yeah, women but, were allowed to drive in the 70s. I didn't oh, yeah. know that. No, that was true. They could vote and everything back then. Oh, my God. Yeah, Are you yeah. serious? Oh, yeah. It was a whole thing. Oh, wow. This may have broken barriers by letting <laughs> Loretta Swift drive <laughs> yeah. the RV. Yeah. You know what's weird? You know what this movie's rated? R. PG. PG? It's rated PG. Well, they even don't... with boobies. Well, they're kind of. If you, I was actually well, trying in to this re- woman's contract, her boobies had to yeah, be they're shrouded. blurred. Yeah, but yeah. there, I did see you other see ones. the other ones through the fire, and then the woman that they sacrificed, she's fully naked, and they Wait. hold her up and stab her. Well, she so. didn't want to ruin her her career by showing boobs on yeah. in the movies, right? Yes, and and it is funny that they live in this small Texas town, and throughout the entire movie, you do not see one attractive woman <laughs> in the small Texas town. I guess it's because they kill them all. I, I suppose. yeah, I was about to say they're which, killing the hot ones. <laughs> which <laughs> I'm just. I'm just thinking, like, if I was at the meeting, I'd be like, y'all, if we're going to kill women. Here's a thought. I got some names I can give you people. Old Mrs. Farmer down yeah, the road. you know, like, <laughs> maybe we don't get the wind and the rain and all that, but we got to get something back for it. And we're getting rid of her. Oh, yeah. you know? oh my God. Oh, yeah. There you go. Get rid of the town bitch first. That's the first one. But no go. no killing the dogs. That, that oh, that's. I knew the I second. Knew, I knew Ginger I, was dead. Yeah. There was no way Ginger was making it through. I was like, this movie's about satanic rituals. There's no way in hell the dog is going to make uh, it through y- the day. Spoiler y- alert. Yeah, I, I was just wondering how is Ginger going to bite it? You know, I, I knew Ginger was going to die. Ginger is uh, the, dog. the dog who belongs to um, Peter Fonda. Peter and, Fonda's uh, wife. So Kelly, I think. Kelly. Yeah. And uh, Roger and Kelly. Uh, you've got... Okay, Roger, yeah, Roger and Kelly Roger and Frank and, Kelly. and Alice. So Roger and Kelly. I, I love that they're Frank and Alice. Frank and Alice, yeah. <laughs> so Roger and Kelly have his cute little shih tzu. Uh, I think he's even I got a little bow a, in know, his hair. I think it's a shih tzu. I it? think it's a Lhasa Apso. Oh, it's Lhasa Apso. Because it's okay. brown. But she's really sweet. She's a really cute little dog. Yeah. You know? And I'm just thinking, this dog is not making it to the end of this movie. This is 1975. But face they, it, that's when war would be declared. Oh, That's yeah. when I would go to the gun shop and oh, buy I'd kill everything. Every, I would oh. kill every one of those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. I said oh, yeah. that when we were watching yeah. this. I was like, Josh, oh man, if somebody came after Millie like that, they'd be toast. It, it would turn into first blood. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You better John get Wick. some more body bags. Yeah. yeah. It would be like, you know, Jade, Jade would show up at the sheriff's <laughs> office and say, I'm not here to warn <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not here to protect, protect him from you. I'm here to protect you from him. Yes. Damn um, straight. So they they see a sacrifice. Yes. You know. Um and, and, and they make the first mistake. Their their downfall is the noise that they make and they they yeah. flip out. Well Loretta right essentially kills all of them. Yes, yeah, she does. If you look back on yeah, it. Yeah, because she's the one Spoiler screaming. alert. Yeah. <laughs> and what is she doing? She's nagging. <laughs> Her nagging resulted in four deaths. Yeah, ladies, take note. <laughs> nagging is bad. It's very bad. <laughs> if um, you're listening. Yeah. W- well, because you know. They they see they see the the sacrifice and and as they're seeing it and they're looking through binoculars, uh, Loretta Swit comes out and starts nagging, and instead of running over there and going shut the fuck up, or covering her by the mouth and dragging her back inside, yeah, they're me... they're standing over going be quiet, <laughs> they might be quiet, oh, stop being yeah. so damn loud, yeah, no yelling on the bus, <laughs> and of course the Satanists uh, hear them and begin to uh, pursue them and somehow. Now they're like climbing all over and okay. They basically turn into the mummies from uh, the mummy returns yeah. <laughs> on the well, double decker bus scene. Well, here's what I don't understand. When I watched the scene where they were being chased by the Satanists, you know, right after they saw the, uh, the sacrifice, I thought that more than one window got broke. And uh, then I know what, the back one got, I, broken. well, the back one definitely got broke, but I felt like other windows had gotten broken also. Mm-hmm. And, well, we're watching it right now. Let's find out. Oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> But then, you know, of course, they they go to the, you know, into corner. the river. Yeah, into the river. In the deep section. <laughs> and they get stuck. And that build that does build quite a bit of suspense. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. watching this oh, in, it was in the dark yeah. and I was like, come on, guys, you can get out of there. Come <laughs> on, put some wood under there. That's what I would do. Well, I said the same put thing. Put the girls on the back of the dirt bikes and just haul ass. Well, that would have been the smart thing to Come do. back in the morning for the RV. If yeah, it's for, gone, it's yeah, gone, yeah. but you're yeah. not dead. Forget the RV, yeah. man. Oh, but it reminded me actually, oddly enough, of an episode of that 70s show when Eric takes the gang camping 
And his dad equips him with a bag of kitty litter, some road flares, like all the useful tools that you need to keep in your trunk in case you have a mishap with your car on the road. And Eric is zoning out while Red is talking to him and teaching him how to use these things in case. And then later he's just like, what did dad give me kitty litter for? Did he have a stroke? And then you realize he gave it to him for traction for his tires. Yes. But yeah. Oddly enough, that's what that made me think of. Well, and, and so they, they do manage to flee. Uh, they do. They do, because the Satanists are just one step behind them, you know. Uh, but then the Satanists are climbing all over the car, and they're they're smashing things and 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 doing all sorts of damage to the RV. Um, again, and this was that was the scene where I said, God, if they had a gun, this would just be, I mean, be shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, because the would Satanists be. only knives. have knives. Yeah, they, I mean, bring a knife to a gun. You know, fight. a guy stands up in the window with a knife. Bang. Yeah. Next. Um, <laughs> Anybody else? This is Texas. And it's also, it's weird that in Texas, they didn't have guns. Yeah, nobody had guns. Nobody had a gun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess it's like the, not their style. Hey, man, you know, like, life's still groovy. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but the, okay, so Yeah, that's, there goes the back window okay, for sure. Okay, so that's the back window. But, um, stay down, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Oh, and okay, also, so- when you're driving a vehicle in a getaway kind of situation, focus on the road. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, let Peter Fonda take let, care of beating some ass in the yeah. back. Where you just focus on the road. Like I think it would have been funny if Loretta Swit had taken Ginger and started like, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, like falling off, using like, him like Baxter like, and yeah, Anchorman, <laughs> like a pillow, just punch him at the same. <laughs> <thing. laughs> um, but they they make the mistake of classic, you know, seventies, you know, small town uh, Satanist movie mistake. They leave and they go straight to the police. We may have to take a break in just a second, just so you know. Um, we so are, they go to the police. Okay, well, actually, let's hold that thought, okay. and we will come back in about one second. Awesome. All right. Woo. And we're back. Hello. Wait, I haven't sat down yet. And, and the, the camera's <sighs> not on you, Mr. Brown. There, there, oh, there, it there, is there. now. They <laughs> caught me. They caught me unawares. So the Satanists, uh, or not the Satanists, the, uh, uh, the police, the police, they do a pretty good job faking an investigation. Yeah, they do. You know, <laughs> I mean, you could almost fall for it. Because, uh, spoiler alert, Hindsiders, everybody in the town is in on it. Yeah, they're all, every, all Satanists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Started out as a swingers club and they branched out to other you know, kind of other activities. I can see that. Well, yeah. you know, you get too old for sex after a certain point is and what then, I've heard. And so. all that's left is murder. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and, Could it be Satan? It's, it's funny because the sheriff kind of reminds me of present day Dennis Hopper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little, Damn, little dog. Bit. Yeah, that's a tough. Bit. Well, you know, what's her name? Uh, not, uh, um, uh, not Loretta Swit. Not Loretta Swit. The other one, you know, she's sort of like a dime store. Laura Bar- Parker. Laura Parker, like a dime store Barbara Bach. Ah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But no, so the, the we get to the trope of the cop who is so obviously in on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you know. he's just not alarmed at all. And I know part of a policeman's training is obviously to stay calm in the face of, you know, calamity, but he's just way too calm. There's, he's way too smooth in how they operate on this because... He's like, okay, well, you know, leave your women folk here, and I guess we'll go check out that place where you saw somebody get murdered. Like, it's murder, just- <laughs> murder, murder, most yeah, foul. Like, well, maybe it was just the dog. Maybe it was this. Maybe you know. <laughs> and they they scoop up blood, just like the cop just reaches his hand, yeah, just kind of yeah. grab it and put it in a bag. <clears throat> Which I don't know. Maybe in the seventies is what they did. That was well, standard forensics. It was before forensics. we were using yeah. blood for evidence. So yeah, I mean. Oh, and then, and then the part that kills me is he captures blood of his own that he's going to stay, take the state troopers. Yeah. But he just can't help himself. He's got to tell everyone when there's a Satanist yeah. right in the house. Right, yeah, right there. Right there. Yeah. Inside the house. Yeah. He's like, I've got, I took my own sample. Here it is. And I'm going to take it to the big city <laughs> yeah. where, where the, the cops big. aren't corrupt at all. And there's no Satanists. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still not using blood for solving crimes. Well, but they so... could tell if it was human or not. Uh, no, okay. maybe. You know, yeah. All right. That was Fair the thing. Enough. It was like, well, if it comes back human and the sheriff's coming back as a dog, we'll know the sheriff is lying. And this whole process will only take about two and a half weeks back in the 70s. Yeah. So, yeah, it. they do go out to the site where the murder happened. And uh, it just this is where everything really starts to unravel as soon as they're done dealing with the police, because then the entire town turns on these these new travelers. And 
like everybody down to the mechanic, down to like the school teachers, oh, yeah, everyone. everybody, everyone's in on it. The librarians in on it, mm -hmm. the, you know, Booger is probably in on it. <laughs> Gomer Pyle's in on it. You know, I was actually upset. We didn't get enough character development off Booger. <laughs> you know, I thought there was, there was potential there, but we just, you know, kind of over maybe in the, like there's a director's cut. Could be. <laughs> Could more, be. More Booger scenes. Um, <laughs> So they, they flee, um, and they go to the cops, and then the cops basically say, okay, well, we'll call you uh, when, yeah. we, when we find something. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> and instead of just driving the fuck away, I mean, just getting the hell out of there, they, they decide they got to get their back window patched up. Naturally. You know, and I'm thinking, you couldn't just, like, suffer through it, maybe. For at least 100 miles or I mean, something. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to kill you. You know, won't we'll be comfortable, but you could get to a town. And yeah, just close the compartment door and the noise yeah. won't be too bad. Just sit up front with everybody and it'll be fine. Just get the hell out of Dodge. No, but they go to Cletus's... Uh, <laughs> Slackjaw yokel his, shop. Yeah, the Slackjaw yokel mechanic, <laughs> um, who, of course, is in, right off the bat saying ominous things. Yeah. You know, like his cat would kill their dog. And, mm -hmm. you know, his cat's never lost a fight and, like... Okay, was that necessary? We're trying to be paying customers, bud. Like, it, and they are kind of assholes, everybody. Yeah, they are. They're from out of state. No, they're but from they're out not, of town. Yeah, they're out of town. But <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, they're still from that uh, state. But um, yeah, so they instead of immediately fleeing to safety, they they keep lingering in the area. You know, my my inclination is as soon as I had gotten a note. That said, you know, if you say anything, something bad's going to happen. That's it. Vacation's over. Yeah. Going home now. And I mean, especially if you witnessed a murder with your own eyes, it's not like the women were being hysterical about it or the husbands didn't believe the women where they're like, oh, Roger, I want to go home. And they're, the guys saw it. And yeah. everybody ran yeah. like yeah. They, we all saw it, gang. So it's not like it was made up. I mean, they did a decent job of covering their tracks at the actual site, but it's it's not like all four of you were tripping or anything or overly drunk. Like you saw what you saw. So leave. Yeah. And, and I lived in New York City for 10 years. If I see a what? murder, I'm just I'm just driving off and not saying anything to anyone. <laughs> uh, see, that's what I said. I'm not getting involved. Yeah. That's a good way I'm to get not murdered. Get, did anyone see anything? I didn't see anything. Nothing. Yeah, I was actually thinking that I, you know, if let's, let's put ourselves in that actual yes, scenario. Exactly. I am, I am driving to like a big, big building with lots of police officers who are paid by the governor, <laughs> you know, like if the conspiracy goes all the way up that high, I'm dead anyway. Right. But I mean, you know, the, the temptation would just be to say, fuck it. I'm not saying shit. It's a small town. What happens in this little small town stays yeah. in the small town. They seemed like they enjoyed it, what they were doing. Yeah. Maybe I did miss, you know, I misread it. Let's just get <laughs> out of here. Yeah. And beyond not just like getting all the way back home or back to safety, they stop <laughs> for a pool dip. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. of course. I, yeah. And I just like, did you guys notice the lady who looked just like B. Arthur in the pool scene? <laughs> No, well, no. There was a lady who looked just I like her. I think I did re do remember her, yes. Because <laughs> they're going around, and that's when the women really start to figure out that it's this massive conspiracy. The, the woman. The, it was only... The women. The women, the wives were but I think swimming. Was, well, I know, but there was only one wife that kind of sensed, she had almost a sixth sense. What was her name again? Kelly? Kelly. Yeah. And... You know, Loretta Switch, she was just like, really? I, I don't think she saw it as much as, as Kelly. But then they get back to the RV from the pool, and poor Ginger has been smart. Well, they go to dinner with the weird weird with the weird oh, couple. Oh, yeah, they stop in a dive. And, it, and and then, of course, Warren Oates said, this is the best time I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. What kind of life have you led, I mean, you think Frank? That yeah, I mean, like, have you ever, like, been to a drive-in movie or something? Because that seems more fun than, you know. In rural Texas? Maybe yeah, not. like a shitty, you know, uh, honky-tonk. <laughs> no, so wait, let's yeah. look for B. Arthur here. Oh, uh, she's it? definitely in the well, scene. Well, this, this scene, this scene uh, gets me because they obviously. There she is. Yeah, there, yeah. There's, there's B. Arthur, <laughs> yes. B. Here. Well, because they and obviously just filmed Dollar Store Barbara Bach. <laughs> and they said, just look uncomfortable. And then they just went around filming people who are in a totally different location. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. And they just keep cutting. They could cut to like, you know, like uh, a picture of Eisenhower. <laughs> it might have even been <laughs> yeah. stock footage. It could have been. Right? Oh. No, but see, now both of the women are picking up on it. They're looking around and they're just surrounded by hostile people. 
Uh, oh no, you're right. She's like, "What's the matter?" Yeah. And Kelly goes, "I don't goes, like it here. Like Why? It here. It's cool. It's refreshing." Well, that was another thing that got me. Wasn't it freezing ass cold? Yeah, uh, Roger's wearing a huge like bear coat. Yeah, a scene before this. So then they're all know. talking about how cold it is, and like well, now you're in the pool. <laughs> well, that's the first thing. When it's cold, I will not swim. I hate swimming in the cold. I like warm swimming. I, oh, that's why uh, you screamed when we went shark diving. Yes, it was terrifying. Got it. <laughs> you weren't cold. scared of the sharks. No. It was just too chilly. Sometimes I wish the sharks ate me. They put me out of my misery. It's cold <laughs> in here. You know, it's funny because when you're a certain age, um, you can look at that interior of that RV and you know how it smelled. You know that cigarette, that cigarette yeah. smell. I was just going like, to say cigarette. That, yeah. that no one's smoking, but I still yeah. smell There's cigarettes a sa- on a brand new yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. There's like that sour cigarette smell. Well, because and- you know somebody worked on the interior of that RV, and they probably oh, smoked, they were definitely so, smoking. Yeah, cigarettes were everywhere back in the seventies. Yeah. So this is, you know, they, they get some. Uh, there's some bad things going on. They've gotten a note from someone who says, you know, we'll kill you. It's got all these runes. Fortunately, runes. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, they go to the public library that just happens to have three books right next to each other, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, what no, a we don't in the librarian. We don't check those books. Yeah, out. they're reference, the books. reference books. Yes. Yeah, so course. they just steal them, which I'm fine with. <laughs> but it's almost like. And I know it's like, OK, it's a movie. So the library had those books. But also, wasn't that a red flag that yeah. the library had those books? Because it's not ordinary reading that no, you do at a library no. to look up satanic runes. But but wait a minute. In the research, it, oddly, it wasn't satanic. It was Aztec runes. Yeah, it was Aztec. Yeah. Are they were using it for satanic Aztecs purposes. Aztecs were evil? Yes. Yeah. That, Sounds a little racist to yes. me. <laughs> well, and they actually say like that, that, <laughs> that, that the Aztecs would do the sacrifice to get satanic powers. The Aztecs had no fucking clue who Satan was. Yeah, Satan no. was no. the Antichrist. and It was long before Christianity you know, yeah. was even introduced to yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, this was back when not the audience members wouldn't know that. So no, that's true. we can call them out on this that's in true. 2023 because we know better. But, you know, you weren't sitting in the theater back in the 70s going, these, hold on. These guys here, the couple that, that shows up. If you just the walk, most obvious wife swappers <laughs> in oh, the history yeah. of the fucking world. Like they're looking around for the fishbowl <laughs> right now. I mean, these are the. You know, because I'm, um, you know, that's what happens at these RV parks. It's all, yes. it's oh, all yeah. wife swapping. Hello, Clark. How would yeah. you know? <laughs> Clark Griswold. <laughs> What's your name? Yeah. Clark Griswold. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if anybody just walked into my mobile home without so much as knocking like this couple did, I yeah. would punch them in the yeah. face. I'd yeah. be like, what are you doing in my home? Yeah, they're definitely not behaving like they're in the middle of a security thing. And this guy, by the way, he's, I think he does cosplay as Spock. <laughs> it's very possible. You know, he's got, he has Spock's hair. He he's got look. a Nimoy he has, look yeah. to He's him got Winter sure. Nimoy's haircut, yeah. Um, Which would have been, you know, the yeah. style. Yeah. <laughs> Was it though? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, who knows? Could have been. So the weird, weird couple, the Hendersons or the... Oh, my God. It's like between Spock and Jim Carrey. Yeah. It <laughs> oh, is. wow. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Rubber face. Yes. But they... So they're obviously... There is something wrong with these individuals. Yeah. And they make an excuse about, you know, uh, no, no, no. We don't want to go to dinner because we're going out. I'm like, oh, well, we'll show you a good place. And they agree to go. Yeah. Like, they're still concerned about being polite. Yeah. I, at this point... One attack by Satanists. One. I'm throwing all the rules of etiquette out the window. You'd see like a wily e. Coyote, you know, smoke cloud behind me. And I'd be yeah. out of there so quickly. I'd be like doing the whole A-team thing, like welding shit on the side of the RV. <laughs> you know, I'd have like a little like turret on the top, you know. <laughs> I mean, full Walking Dead. <laughs> I, yeah, it would be. Well, especially after the dog gets killed. Oh, Because it's then it's first blood. Yeah, you know, it's all you know we should we should remake this where we actually after the dogs kill we actually design like a damnation alley type that would vehicle. Be fucking awesome! And then once the flames, and <laughs> then the, then the turrets come up and it's just, just a slaughter. Oh it's my just god! Slaughter them all, dude. That would be and awesome. then just drive off slowly. The yeah. end. Roll credits. Roll credit. There's your I twi- like it. There's your twist ending. Yes. And since he brought up the flames, so hindsighters, we're we're kind of getting toward the crux of the movie. Yes. So we're not going to be in much longer on this episode. But what ends up happening is that the poor pair of couples gets tricked into circling back to the very site of the ritual where the tree was ignited in a you know blitz of fire and the girl was sacrificed. 
And unfortunately, you know, you think they've got a passing shot of getting away, but then a ring of fire erupts mm-hmm. around the RV and you know it's all over. And I bet the RV could drive through that. If they could drive through a river twice, yeah, yeah. I'm willing and, to and bet. Just, and just roll over all the people yeah. walking there without guns. That would, be, that would be, there's your ending. And he starts just doing donuts, just running them all over. If anybody could do it, it like, would like be Like Death Peter Race Fonda. 2000, just peeling yeah, out yeah. on their heads and their bodies. And I, I, but, yeah, At the very I like least, you're, I'm not giving up when I see the Ring of Fire. No. I'm no. driving through it, and I'm going to take as many of those motherfuckers with me as possible. I don't know. Louise gave up, gave up when she saw the Ring of that's true. That's true. <laughs> Which, but it's okay. It's non-burning fire. <laughs> <laughs> what about my lawn? <laughs> so, Mr. Brown, there okay. is... <laughs> Enlighten me, please. Bob's Burgers makes a reference to this movie, I'm pretty sure, in a Halloween episode where Louise, the young daughter who wears the bunny ears, yes. she can not be scared by anything, and she prides herself on that. So the family makes a haunted house and then pretends as if Satanists are basically taking over it. And they, they finally end up panicking and climbing out on the roof and they set the lawn on fire in a circle. Oh. And Louise loses her little mind. The, and I, the best Bob's Burgers Halloween episode, I think. That's good. I love it. I'm going to yeah. watch it then. And I see you all fall yeah. apart. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the same one. Oh, that is the same one. Yeah, that's the end of that one. Um, oh, wait, here's another trope. Because back then, phones would just go down and... <laughs> well, they cut the lines, clearly, because he tried to um, he well, tried yeah. to make a call in two different places. Yeah, I know, but it's like, okay, was it that easy to just knock all the phones out wherever this guy's going? Or did they take all the phones in the county out? Hey, maybe that's one of the powers that Satan granted them with their <sighs> Aztec rune rituals. That's true. Rituals. That's true. Maybe that's a... John Lovett said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can take out a phone. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Um, I, feel, I, I actually I, watched that last night. I was just going to say, I, I remember the, I don't remember the rotary pay phones as much as a kid, but I remember the I, push button I remember ones. the push button ones. Oh, like for sure. Silver, yeah. And then the big heavy thing that you pulled and the change would, you know, the, yeah. it would come down oh, and you'd always, and you'd always try to, you'd always try to do Aww. it and see if maybe you could get some change out of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it worked every once in a while. Um, but, um, Exxon. and I love they keep plugging Amarillo. Yeah. <laughs> like we have to make it to the grand, the Eden yeah, that Amarillo. is Amarillo. <laughs> Got to make it to yellow. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Amarillo. I'm not, you know. Yeah. I've never been there. Yeah. I wouldn't know. But yeah. So unfortunately it's a ruse, you big dumb idiot. Yeah. So all four of our characters, you don't see it happen, but you have to assume that they pererish at the end of the movie. Well, they leave you hanging. They might have yeah. just plowed right through them with their beat yeah, up. You know, it it's kind of like Black Christmas. You don't know that the killer's coming back downstairs. He's just calling on the phone. So it is yeah. true. It, it leaves it up to your own artistic interpretation. That is so deep. I, I'd almost it, retitle this Anatomy of an RV. Yeah. Because <laughs> as they got hit with things, That's you got to the see what's under the, oh, yeah. the panels. Oh, yeah. What happens when the lights came off? You know, the, the, the RV is really the star of the, uh, the movie. <laughs> it is. Oh, yes. You know. Uh, apparently Loretta Swit was difficult to work with. Oh, really? How yeah. do you know? Uh, that was uh, apparently the uh, the actress who played uh, what's her name Kelly. Kelly said that Loretta Swit was was not very pleasant to work mm. with, and you can kind of see it. Yeah, like the whole movie, Loretta Swit really looks like she doesn't want to be in this movie, which actually fits the character because she doesn't want to be in the situation that her character's in. So yeah, it but works. I don't think it was acting. No, That's the thing. I don't think <laughs> no it was acting either. required. Yeah. Which I don't understand. When you're on a set, it just makes sense to for everybody to get along. Like, why? Why have drama? Why be a diva? She was a why, Mister Brown? Well, why be a diva? It's hard not to be sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, it is interesting that the way they ended the movie. I think that's. Well, I don't, wasn't it you? Who? No, it wasn't you. Someone when you're writing. Anyone can write an opening and a body. It's the end that is the most difficult for any story. Oh, so yeah. I, I think they were just like, how can we end this? Well, fire goes around, roll credits. I mean, and it is, if you look at it from the perspective of sitting in a movie theater and you want to leave the audience with this, you know, feeling, I mean, that does work. It, you was, know? it was dramatic. Yeah, because you're like, oh, my God, that's it. Oh, did they die? I don't know. Uh, let's go see it again. Because you're kind of Which, em- emotionally invested in them, and I think that's what all that buildup was really designed to do. You you actually care what happens to these characters by the end of the movie. I was... Yeah, you really do. You do get invested. I was disappointed to see that they, you know, fell victim to a stupid ruse. But, you know, these are the guys who went on a dirt road to begin with and apparently couldn't read a map uh, when they were trying to escape, so... 
Couldn't everybody read maps back in the 70s? I thought that was like a requirement of the day. Yeah, people get lost. You know, you get lost all the time. Well, back then, A, maps were free. Yeah. Because I remember my dad saying, I can't believe they charge for maps at a gas station. <laughs> and then people who worked at gas stations actually knew directions. That's a thing, too. Yeah. Well, they kind of had to. I mean, your, your clientele was dependent uh, on you, you just roll the window down and ask somebody you know, for directions. Yeah. And I mean, I remember that driving around with my dad as a kid, you know, on vacations and you would get lost. Oh my God. You know? There wasn't But he Google would never Maps. pull over for directions. There wasn't a AAA trip tick. Nope. You just well, drove. Well, even the repairman I just spoke to a few minutes ago said, my GPS isn't loading. Uh, I don't know where I am. And I was just like, oh, great. <laughs> so. Well, and it's, it's amazing how dependent we are on, on all that. Well, oh, we extremely know. dependent. I don't know how I survived without it. It's honestly, it's amazing that. Because even when you're following us somewhere, you pull out your GPS. <laughs> oh, I, look, my, my, I my son do. gets, you know, he, he just the other day I was taking, going from his school to the office and I put the office in the GPS and he's like, why, you know how to get there. And I said, yeah, but this way, if there's an accident or if there's something, boom, immediately. What if the Satanists attack the defender? Exactly. What yeah. then, David? See, that's what they you, needed. You, David. That's what they needed. Yes. They needed a fucking Land Rover Defender. Yes, you, you know? did. Then you could just squish those assholes. Yeah, seriously. You know? I mean, you do get a good on top of the uh, RV uh Seared actions. like tuna steaks. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this is stupid. You're still on the RV. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what? Oh, huh? <laughs> duck. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and oh. in there. That stunt man is toast. I was hoping that the car behind would run over him like they do in the modern movies. <laughs> like <laughs> they do in they Death Race do. 2000. <laughs> well, it's weird that there's really not, there's not a high kill count. There's not a lot of, there's really no gore. Yeah, the only person it's you see. Kinda, it's a tame movie. The only person you see definitely die is the woman who gets sacrificed in the beginning. Yeah. Like everybody else, they might, you know, sustain a terrible injury or something, but you don't actually see them die. Yeah, her and Ginger. Mm. Yeah, it's like the Ginger. A-team. They never, no one ever dies. But I love, I love Warren Oates' intuition here with this school bus wreck. Yeah, and he just, because it, it's He's Sunday. like, school bus on a Sunday. And then Wait. they all start chasing him, right? Nuns don't work on Sunday. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Famous Magnum scene. Um, but but uh, then, uh, th 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 there was one, just oh. one last thing I wanted to say. A, every vehicle that rolled, you could see the roll bars within them. Yeah. Yeah. And then secondly, when it went over the bridge, they actually had a ramp so they didn't damage the uh, yeah. guardrails. Alf to Seinfeld. Why don't Alf we do this? Seinfeld. If you guys want to, I can take us out if you want to. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I've got some business I unfortunately yeah, have let's to Yeah, let's get Alf to Seinfeld. Because this is a straight five out. for me. So yeah. Straight uh, five for me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going I'm to say it's a six for me. Okay. Uh, it got it a little improved. Bit better. It got a little bit better because I didn't know who Warren Oates was. That's fence enough. <laughs> and now I do. Well, anyway. everybody, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, we will be back very soon. We're going to get back on our normal schedule. Yay. So please keep checking the website and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, other than that, thank you for spending your daytime, your nighttime, your drive time, your listening time, or your sacrificing people time. to Satan time. <laughs> this has been Hindsight. And good night.